Husband's ex-beauty queen stalker bombarded us with harassment and threats, spent 18 months evading justice, and now faces potential punishment. Last week, yet another court date for ex-beauty queen stalker came and went. We'd been expecting things to proceed with her entering a plea of guilty or not guilty but no such luck, all we got was another vague reason as to why she's not ready and a new court date issued, months from now. There have been many court dates since she has been arrested. It's been over 18 months since she's been arrested for her continued stalking and harassment, and she still wants to drag things on, to seemingly try and stay relevant in our lives. As an aside, the amount of court resources and taxpayers' money that's wasted is actually really astounding, anyway, onto the story. To recap, my husband dated a beauty queen title holder of a well-known pageant before me. They broke up long before we met. She was a statuesque blonde, very tall, a knockout in her day, in my opinion. This is somewhat important to the story, I guess. But, while she was a dazzling pageant winner on the outside, on the inside, oh boy. She could be charming and beautiful if she needed you, but mostly, she treated people around her terribly, including my husband, and he eventually broke it off with her. But she never went away. She would continue to call and email, repeatedly, even after my husband and I met. If anything, her calls increased. She would call over and over again, day and night, even after my husband, then boyfriend, blocked her number. She would ask for money, and threatened to go to the police claiming he abused her if he didn't give it to her. He obviously did not give her money. This made her very upset. The threats increased and became more malicious. But when that didn't work, she would switch tactics and try and sweetly ask him for help with certain projects she was trying to get off the ground, or more accurately, have him do the work for her and s. He take the credit, with the promise that if he did just this one last thing for her she would go away. He did not reply. So she would go back to being malicious. Any tactic for attention, or for what she really wanted, money. My husband was terrified. Because of course, while he never did anything to her, it would be her word over his and he was terrified of ruining his reputation and career. We unfortunately ended up at an event she also attended. She had been waiting for us to arrive and had placed herself near the entrance of the event. As we walked in, she stood across the room, looking me up and down, laughing and whispering into the ear of her date, making a point to try and make me uncomfortable. But that was okay, she was easily ignored until she ambushed me as I came out of the bathroom. She had clearly been waiting for a moment I was alone. She towered over me, she is very tall, I had no intention of having it out with her and as I hurriedly walked to find my husband, but she kept pace beside me, hunched over, so she was at my eye level, I'm 5 feet 5 inches, her head turned towards me. She was like a caricature of herself as she ambled beside me, smiling maniacally. Where is your man? She hissed in her heavy accent. Her eyes were black. She looked like out of a Tim Burton movie, hunched over with that crazy demonic smile. Watch your back, pug. She added, grinning, she liked to call me names like pug because I own pugs and I guess she thought this was an insult, what I didn't know then was while I was in the bathroom, she had walked over to my husband and had thrown her arm around him while he was in mid-conversation with someone, and introduced herself to the man he was talking to, as if she and my husband were together. My husband unwrapped himself from her clutches and told her to beat it. She then beelined and waited for me to come out of the washroom. We stopped going to the parties. The last time we ran into her was at a funeral for a mutual friend. She, followed me around at the wake. As my husband, boyfriend at the time, was talking to the man's widow, I was talking to a friend and his wife. She walked right up and stood with us, joining us mid-conversation as if she were part of the group. It was unnerving but also just. Bizarre. It was a funeral and I did not want a scene. I silently picked my wine glass off the bar and walked away, leaving her with the couple I had been speaking to, and her staring at me with a smirk on her face. All in all, annoying but manageable. However, the emails, calls, never stopped. She would call my husband over and over, day and night, even though he had long blocked her number. She would drive by. I found my car keyed one night after I left it outside, but obviously I couldn't prove it's her. But enough was enough. My husband had a lawyer send a cease and desist. After the first, she called him from a private number. He answered and she said, Hi E, it's me in a sing-song voice like they were the best of friends and he hadn't just sent her a lawyer's letter ordering her to stay away from him and he is family. He said nothing and hung up. Another cease and desist was sent. Then a third. Nothing would make her go away. She did not actually think my husband was capable of not wanting to be with her, because you know, her beauty. Eventually though, she got pissed that he was not giving in. So, she decided to take this rage to the internet. I knew that she was absolutely checking out my social media but I don't really use it much so I didn't care. However, she created a fake Twitter account and tweeted husband's name as a fraud and tagged his colleagues, friends, investors, family members. Every single person she could think of to try and ruin his reputation and career. On New Year's Eve, she posted on my Instagram account at exactly 12.01 AM. Happy New Year Scrud social media settings were all put to private. We went to the police armed with the emails threatening T. Give her money or she would go to the police, she was charged with two counts of harassment, and a restraining order was put into place. To our shock, the next day after her arrest, our phones were buzzing. 
This story had made front page news, clearly a slow news day, her day in court came, right before COVID. We arrived to the courthouse and sat down. She walked in, we were shocked by her appearance. Actually shocked is an understatement. She was unrecognizable from her former self. Gone was the statuesque, dazzling blonde. She had apparently shaved her head and was wearing a short, ratty brown wig. She had gained about 80 pounds, give or take, and was now sort of hunched. With her height and new girth, she looked like a linebacker. To add to her new look, she wore a bulky brown men's overcoat and a scarf tied over her wig, like a babushka. My immediate thought was, her outside now matches her inside. But it was her eyes that I noticed the most. About a year earlier, we had shown a photo of her to our kids so that if she ever approached them, they knew to run. At the time, my son, who was young, commented that she had mean eyes. From the mouth of babes. Maybe it was that she had changed so much physically overall, but her dark eyes had narrowed into deep, black slits. As she scanned the courtroom and saw us in court, she would turn around every so often to look back at us and glare. She would then whisper in her lawyer's ear, and laugh as if she were having a grand time. She had a pair of big, round cheap sunglasses that she would put on and take off intermittently. When she addressed the judge, she put them on, and he asked her to remove them. We thought she was putting on a brave face and treating it all like a joke, but we were about to find out that getting arrested wouldn't slow her down. The restraining order didn't seem to phase her at all. If anything, it angered her more. From then on, every day, night and day, she would post from multiple fake socia, L media accounts, posting photos of myself, of my husband. She would put up my husband's photo with the caption pedophile or other terrible names that included racist and transphobic comments and captions. To give you a slight idea, she posted altered pictures of my husband, photoshopped to look like he was wearing heavy makeup and referring to him as a pre-op transgender. She posted altered and unflattering photos of myself. She called me old ugly, those are the G-rated ones. Listen, I am no beauty queen myself. The name calling, while obsessive and gross, wasn't what bothered me most. Although I'm not going to lie, seeing hundreds of photos of myself on her fake Twitter account calling me ugly and obsessively pointing out every single perceived flaw did succeed in getting me down at times, why did I keep looking? Because it was like getting a glimpse into her unraveling slash unraveled mind, just in case it was a clue of what she was capable or thinking of doing next. Because it wasn't her insulting posts that fazed me. What bothered me most were the sinister captions, keep an eye on your kids because I be watching or why don't you plant some flowers in your front yard or be good to your kids because you never know what could happen how was your Uber Eats order. She would post pictures of me with an arrow directed to my head, which I perceived to be a gun to my herd. She posted pictures of my husband's workplace, which she was not allowed to be within two blocks of, in accordance to the restraining order, but the police said this could be just a picture she took from the internet size she posted Agatha Christie quotes like every killer is usually someone you know well or your end is near her Twitter profile banner picture was taken from a movie poster and said stalker like she was in on the joke. We called the police again but they said there wasn't anything they could do since she didn't explicitly tag us. I took screenshots of everything. Many of her posts were nonsensical, but most were photos posted of us on this fake account, all altered with derogatory or ominous captions. But we couldn't get her shut down. I became anxious anytime my kids were outside shooting hoops in the driveway. My elderly mother wouldn't take the baby out in the stroller, she was too scared. It affected all of our lives. Life became. Dramatic. Ex-beauty queen would taunt us with catch me if you can. She posted close-ups of her dog's genitals, or a piece of her dog's shit with my name beside it, the implication obvious. It bothered me she now had a dog, since, I didn't think someone like her was capable of caring for anything living. Then the call started back up, this time to our home line, yes we still have a home phone, lol. Bitch and then a hang up. Karma will get you and then weird chant-like calls, as if she were reciting a spell. Sure enough, she posted photos of a pentagram and candles, as some sort of altar in the caption ring ring, finally, finally, the police asked us to come in and give video statements. We gave them a drive containing thousands of screenshots of posts she had made. They arrested her again and charged her with two more counts of criminal harassment. My husband was angry at this point, but as mama bear, I just wanted to get this over with. She mentioned the kids frequently and ominously many times in her online rants, also calling them rude names, which I won't repeat here because these are the things that upset me most. The judge also issued a social media ban for her. By the time she was rearrested for the second time, her fake Twitter account, which was literally mostly insults or references to my family, had 16,000 tweets in a three-month period. She has no followers so they were just to herself. The porn sites I had been continuously being tagged on stopped. Things quieted down tremendously. But I still get follower requests that I believe are her. But at this point, we were, all on edge. I kid you not, I felt weird walking into my kitchen at night to make a sandwich feeling creeped out that she was outside watching. I put nothing past her, as nothing is more dangerous than a desperate woman who has nothing to lose. Which, by the way, was one of the quotes she posted. I don't know what is wrong with her. I believe, from what I've researched, she is a malignant narcissist. Perhaps some other mental issues at play here, but I can say she was a terrible person long before she decided to try and make our lives miserable.
Crazy beauty queen turned stalker, I would love nothing more than to never meet again. But if going to court helps you stay away from us forever, then bring it. As an aside, I wanted to mention that we heard from a reliable source that after my husband broke up with her, she allegedly became known to police for other reasons. While my husband dodged a bullet regarding her threats to go to police saying he abused her, apparently other men have not been so lucky. Since I can't post pictures, I'll leave you with one of her posts, one that may not make much sense but to us, it was a statement to let us know she enjoys this drawn out court process. Many of her posts are in her native language, so this is translated. Violent women, and the cruelest, never answer questions. They like to continue the misunderstanding indefinitely. So I seek to contact people only in order to torment them. My cruelty is my last attachment to the world, and my last chic. Oop, I doubt she'll go to jail, but we are hoping for some sort of punishment. She just doesn't seem to think the law applies to her. Our fear is that if the retraining order is lifted one day, she'll go right back to bothering us. It's taken a lot of time and effort to get her to stay away from us. Oop, I do know it sounds very lifetime movie of the week lol. Update 1. Hi everyone, I posted about my family's experience with my husband's crazy beauty queen ex, it's been a, few years now. I wasn't going to post an update because I wanted to let sleeping ex beauty queen stalkers lie, but I still get a ton of messages asking how things are going, I figured why not. We feel more protected now that it's over. Thank you again for all your kindness and support. To recap, my husband dated a beauty queen of a well-known pageant before we met. Once we started dating, she went nuclear and it felt like we were living straight out of a Stephen King novel. It was a scary and stressful time, to say the least. I'm sure it would give her great satisfaction to know she affected our lives in such a negative way. Let me start off by saying, the court process is long. It took years for resolution. During that time, she had to live with an assurer. For those who don't know, because I certainly didn't, the assurer has to front up the bail money, which was over $1,000 but under $5,000 in her case, and have the defendant live with them while they are out on bail. Her initial assurer was her mother, but after she was rearrested for continuing to harass us, the judge said that she had to have a new assurer since she kept breaking the law under her mother's watch. Since COVID, everything is done via Zoom and a virtual courtroom. There have been a few court dates during the past few years but only her lawyer was present. These court sessions were basically asking to defer, etc. It was all very long and drawn out. The last court date was last August of 2023. I was curious as to what she looked like now, and to have this finally behind us. Finally, she appeared in the virtual courtroom. She was no longer wearing the wig, it looked like she had some real hair, it was short, brown and pin straight. She was the same weight as I had last seen her in person and she was wearing a long white sort of coat, almost like a lab coat. No makeup. She was scattered, couldn't get her zoom to work, wouldn't come into focus in the meeting, even though the judge repeatedly asked her to be visible during the proceedings but she didn't listen to him, she kept going out of sight. She had the San Francisco bridge as her zoom background. Anyway, it was a gong show. But in the end, the result of this last court session was that she didn't plead guilty or not guilty, instead she was able to agree to certain terms or risk being arrested again. To be honest, I found it slightly confusing but at least it was officially over. The most interesting part for us was after the virtual court proceedings were finished, the judge told us we could switch off our cameras. We did, but she didn't. So my husband and I watched, fascinated, as the judge presided over other virtual cases and she, on mute, sat on a chair and called someone on her phone. She began crying, then laughing hysterically, then crying again, but looking into the camera as she's doing this. I couldn't tell if this was accidental or not. Was she trying to gain some sympathy or was it an honest mistake? We will never know. Lastly, I add this with a huge caveat that this is pure speculation. I had mentioned in my original post how she posted pictures of her dog's s backslash, with my name beside it. However, when my friend looked through the pictures, she observed that no way could s backslash, that size come from such a tiny dog. And when I look at it, I couldn't help but agree but my brain refuses to process. If it's true then. Ew. However, this also will be something we'll never know. Probably for the best. Either way, karma has caught up with her big time. We know from one of the bail variation requests, she lives in subsidized housing. I haven't seen her since her in-person since the original court date back in February of 2020. I received quite a few messages from people who knew who this was and said they had had run-ins with her, specifically a person who claimed a family member had been scammed out of money by her. That's all there is to tell. Our lives have moved on and I'm happy to report that no news is good news. I'll always be extremely cautious about my social media settings but I don't think about her anymore unless I get a request for an update, etc. Thank you again for your messages and for all the support. And to the crazy ex-beauty queen stalker, we are thrilled to never meet again.